Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is episode 55 of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. My name is Allison. I am the hand dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns and your host for this knitting podcast. Uh, if this is your first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. I do have a couple finished objects to share with you guys. Um, so that's always really exciting if this is your first time watching to actually see finished things. Um, if this is not your first time and you've been around for a while, then you know that finished objects are few and far between on the podcast. So I'm really excited to share um, what I have this week with you guys and seeing that or seeing as how I recorded just one week ago, um, I feel like I'm finally figuring out my rhythm and um, yeah, getting stuff done. I have a lot of throughput on some old projects that have been languishing and I'm just, for whatever reason, my mood right now is just to finish things up. So that is really good. I'm taking full advantage of that. Um, I am coming to you from Lincoln, Nebraska, where I live with my family. It is going to be about 60 degrees today, so the sun is out and shining, and I am very excited. Um, we had a little bit of a snow a couple days ago, so it brought us kind of back down into that wintry weather, but I am so hopeful. I keep looking out this window. I'm so hopeful that spring is on its way soon, and I cannot wait like 60s and 70s and oh I'm just so excited. So fingers are still crossed for great weather and that it sticks around. Um, yeah otherwise administrative there isn't much going on in the Ravelry group right now but if you're interested in checking that out I'll leave a link to the Ravelry group down below. I will also have a link to my Ravelry projects pages where you can find everything that I've ever worked on or am working on, specifically the ones that I talk about in the episode. I'll leave a direct link to so you guys can find out more if you're interested. Um, and if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, that is where I am most active and I am Lofty Loops over there. Um, I do have a Facebook page for Lofty Loops Yarns um, if you'd like to follow there as well. Everything that gets posted on Instagram usually ends up on Facebook, so um, it's just for those that may not be on, on the gram uh, and prefer Facebook, so that is always an option, and again, links will all be down below. I'm just going to jump right into my finished objects because I'm so excited to share them with you. Um, first off, this should be no surprise, I finished up my heel toe do -si do socks and these were, oh no, I took the marker off, didn't I? Darn it, I was going to leave the marker so you guys could see where I was when I podcasted last time because these things flew. Um, but yes, I shared one of them finished last week, and then I had cast on, uh, I wasn't too, too far, maybe into the second, um, maybe into the second color of the pattern here on the, on the leg, um, when I showed you guys last week, but when I say this second sock flew off the needles, it flew off the needles. I did have it down to the toe decreases um, day before yesterday, but I had to put it aside to wrap up another project I'll show you next. So I actually just finished um, kitchenering the toe this morning while I was drinking my coffee. But for all intents and purposes, it should have been done a couple days ago, but um, I had to pause on them just a little bit. This pattern is by K of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast and Crazy Sock Lady Designs. It is the heel toe do -si do pattern. It is relatively new um, and it is fabulous. And the yarn I used is Desert Vista Dye Works um, who dyes beautiful self-striping colorways. And this is the overexposed colorway which was based off of the overexposed album cover by Maroon 5. And I am a huge Maroon 5 fangirl, and as soon as I saw that this was a thing, that there was a colorway based on one of their album covers, I bought it immediately. Um, so I'm so happy to have it into a finished pair of socks that I can now wear. And so these will always, 
These will be my Maroon 5 socks. I am going to see them in August, so you know maybe I'll have to wear my socks to the show. We'll see. Um, it, although it is August, so it might be like 105 degrees here. So in which case I probably wouldn't want to wear wool socks. But either way, these are going to get a ton of wear. Um, and I love them so, so much. The blockers are from Woodico. In case you're curious, I've, I do have a medium size, which is a seven to nine foot, uh, I believe women's. And then I also bought a large size, which is nine to 11s, I believe. So these are a little bit snug and I don't know if it's because of the patterning or if it's because I used a US 1.5. Um, but I did follow the stitch count as the pattern suggested. I followed the heel flap and gusset as the pattern suggested. The only thing I changed was the cuff, which um, I did a two by two ribbing on and the pattern calls for a twisted rib. I was gonna see if I could flip it around on the blocker here so you guys could see the front of the sock. That's kind of a, a nice representation of what the front of that sock looks like. So it does have a rounded toe, and then this pattern is just this chevron, this really great chevron, super easy to follow, um, super easy to memorize, and I love how it makes those stripes look. And then the back, or the bottom of the foot, or the back of the leg is just plain stockinette, so you can see the striping here but I love what this chevron does. So yeah, it does, like I said, it has a heel flap and gusset, a slip stitch heel flap, um, and I just carried the yarn through once I got to the heel portion. Um, they are cuffed down, so I started at the cuff, worked my way down the leg. Once I got here, um, I just kept on going with the yarn I had, which ended up making a really nice looking stripe on the heel there. Um, and it didn't do, it didn't break up the stripes as much as I anticipated on the front. Um, you can kind of see here where the sequencing got off a little bit, but I am totally okay with that. I love them. I am so, so happy with them. I am so glad that they're done. I feel like I haven't finished a full pair of socks in a very long time. Um, so yes, highly recommend the pattern. I am going to share, um, I'm not going to share any works in progress with you guys because honestly the only work I put in are on these two finished objects this week. Um, but I am going to share my future cast-ons. Like now that I've finished a couple things, I'm definitely planning on casting on a couple more things. So I'm going to share the yarn with you and my ideas for that. And um, this pattern is definitely happening again. So I love it. I mentioned last week I believe that I don't think I could ever ever knit another pair of self-striping socks without knitting them in the heel toe do -si do pattern. Um, she also has, if you're into that pattern, but maybe you're not a sock knitter, she does have a cowl pattern, um, which is the round and round cowl that follows that same chevron. So you could knit it with minis and make it stripe like that. It's so cool. Um, I definitely want to make one of those in the future. And then she has mitts, uh, fingerless mitts too, that follow that same chevron pattern. So um, Felici Knit Picks Felici would work wonderful for some uh, fingerless mitts in that pattern. That would be super cute. I might have to make, I have some, I have some Felici sitting back here that needs to be made into something. So maybe, maybe that'll be some fun Christmas gifts, Christmas gift knitting. But um, I was going to weigh this before I sat down and forgot, but you can see I have probably, I would have to guess, close to 50 grams left of this skein. So when I knit socks, I only use about 50 grams worth of yarn. Um, and you can see here, they're relatively, they're not super tall socks, um, but they do, you know, my ankle would be about here. So they're a few inches above my ankle. Um, that's where I like my socks. And so in doing that with my gauge, obviously I end up using about 50 grams. So I can make some minis out of this. I can, 
maybe I can make some matching fingerless mitts. I don't know. My daughter would probably love fingerless mitts in, in these colors. So maybe that'll be a Christmas or birthday gift coming up. But I just wanted to share that. I will update the project page with the actual yardage used um, after I get done recording. And now I have an empty project bag that is going to get a new project soon and I will chat about that here in a few minutes. The other finished object I have has been a secret project. I may have shown it only once on the podcast um, and I've never shown it on Instagram or social media. I just, just this morning made a Ravelry project page for it because uh, it is for my friend who is having her first baby here in April and I cast on a flax light pullover by Tin Can Knits. This is the zero to six month size, so it is the smallest size you can make, and it is flipping adorable. So I finished this. Her baby shower is tomorrow, so as soon as I get done recording, I'm gonna give it a good soak and block and hope that it's dry so I can wrap it up for tomorrow afternoon. Um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. And it goes up to many different sizes. There's also a flax pullover, which is the adult version. The flax light is the kid version. Um, and I believe the, the original, the adult flax, is also free. Um, it does have a garter panel on the shoulders and raglan area and down the arm. But I omitted that. I just did straight stockinette which was very easy to do. Um, I didn't swatch, but I did use the needles called for in the pattern, which I believe is a two, US two for the neckline and cuffs and waistband. And then I wanna say a five, which is what I've knit sweaters out of my sock yarn before I've knit them on a US five. So I was, I was pretty comfortable um, with the fabric that it would make. So it is quite stretchy. Um, again, it has not been blocked yet, but I'm a little worried about this neckband um, because babies tend to have very large heads, but I think it'll be okay. And then I did use um, a very stretchy bind off for the waist and around the arms. Um, another thing that I changed with this is I did not do any decreases on the arms. Um, I didn't want them to be too snug. Um, so I just kept the same stitch count that I had when I picked up for the sleeves and then did the one by one on the cuff for about an inch. Um, I hope that it fits him. I really do. Um, if it doesn't, or if it doesn't fit very long, they can put it on a teddy bear or something, or just have it as a keepsake. Um, the yarn that I used is some Lofty Loops yarn, so it is my own hand dyed in the You Know Nothing colorway, which was a color I dyed up for the final season of Game of Thrones. Um, so it is inspired by Jon Snow. Um, and just, I had fun creating it. It's this very pale gray with speckles of some dark navy blues and some icy blues in there. Um, and I actually have it in skein form here. I have some in the shop, so this is what it looks like as a skein. And it's very pretty, and I thought it was perfect for, um, a little boy's, a little baby boy's sweater. So yeah, this again was a total secret project. Um, I didn't want to share it because I know she follows me on Instagram. Um, and even the colorway was a surprise to her. She, I did not tell her what colors she is um, getting. But like I said, her 
Her baby shower is tomorrow, so she will finally see this, and then tomorrow or Monday I will likely post a finished object picture in all the places, but I thought, I don't think she watches the podcast, so I thought it would be safe to uh, share it here beforehand before I gifted it. Um, yeah, I think it's so, so cute, and I really, this was so quick, you guys, knitting um, baby things is so fast. Um, I can say that I finished a sweater, <laughs> um, and it didn't take very long at all. Mind you, it is for a newborn, but, um, I definitely can see myself making more of these as he gets older. Um, I would love to do, you know, maybe the next couple sizes up, um, or kind of do some quick math and see where he might be during the winter times for the next couple winters. Um, yeah, I just, I really hope she likes it. I hope it fits him. I hope he doesn't have any aversions to wearing wool. That would break my heart. Um, this is knit with my lofty sock base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. So there is wool in here. Yeah, let's just hope that he, he doesn't barf all over this constantly. So... <laughs> Um, maybe it'll just be special occasions. I don't know. Whatever. I'm just happy to have made it. Um, I already adore this baby and I have not even met him. Um, but I'd like to think I'm some form of aunt to this little boy. So, um, I will happily knit for him. And this is what I have left over. Again, I didn't weigh it. I apologize. I was going to do that before I sat down and did not do it. But if I had to guess, I would say maybe... 30 to 40 grams, so just a little over half skein. Um, yeah, so now I don't know what I'll do with this. I'll probably wind it off into minis to add for my advent swaps or something like that, um, because that's what I've been doing with all of my leftovers now. I keep a little bit for myself for my scrappy projects, and then I've been winding it off into 10 gram minis and tossing them into a bag. So this Advent season, when I do swaps with people, um, I can just pick out of that bag of extra minis and share those around. So, okay, I don't have any works in progress to share because everything that I worked on this past week has been finished. But I did want to sit down and talk a little bit about what I plan on casting on. Um, I do still have many things on the needles, and um, I do have this want to kind of push through and wrap things up. However, some of the things that are on the needles are going to be more long, longer term projects. Um, nothing, I mean, I do have socks that I could wrap up, but nothing as quick as a hat or a sock would be. Um, so while I still want to put in work on some of those things, I don't anticipate them wrapping up anytime soon, which is why I really want to cast on another pair of heel toe do -si do socks. And I do have quite a bit of self-striping, um, but because spring is coming and because this is beautiful, I, I picked this up in a D stash, I kind of want to knit another pair of socks out of this very pretty London House yarns in the Bobbles colorway. So it's these really pretty springtime colors of pinks, purples, greens, grays, and it does have a bit of Stellina in there, so they're sparkly as well. Um, I just think these would be really fun. These would make really fun socks. Um, yeah, and I picked it up in a D-stash. I've never had London House yarns before, but I am very excited to have this. And it is a 75 Superwash Merino, 20% nylon, 5% silver Stellina, and it is 100 grams, so this will get me at least a pair of socks, and I'll probably have about a half a skein left. So this will be getting cast on here pretty quick. I was in a bit of a mood this past weekend, couple weeks. It's just, I think it's the weather's been getting me down. Stuff's been fairly stressful at work. There's been a lot of life just happening, um, and so I really enjoy the dye process where I feel like I can just get my emotions out, um, get my frustrations out, I can just be artistic and 
most of the time my dye style is whatever I'm feeling at the moment, um, if I'm making up new colorways that is. If I don't have an inspiration in mind, it's just kind of I let my feelings take over, my thoughts and feelings, and I just start grabbing colors and I throw them on the yarn and see what happens. And I really, really like expressing myself in this way. Um, and sometimes it turns out better than I could have ever anticipated. So I want to share with you, I shared a photo on Instagram, but I wanted to share it here as well. This is a new colorway that I came up with. I did write down the recipe as I was throwing colors, so it, I can recreate it. It is a very limited batch. Um, there are only these four, and um, I selfishly kept them, I held them back because I want to cast on a sweater with these. Um, the colorway is called Brine. <laughs> I thought it was fitting because Brine is salt water, very salt, very salty water. Um, and as I was dying, I was being a little bit salty, so I thought it fit nicely. Um, it is a very, it's got a blue base, and then it has, flip it around to the other side of the skeins, um, some deep kind of maroony speckling in there. There's some deep green speckles. There's even deeper blues and grays. It's just, honestly, I was going, I was moody, and I was just tossing colors on, and I'm really happy with how it ended up. So now I am trying to pick out of the list of sweaters that I have in my Ravelry library and what I would like to make. Since I just finished my party top, um, I am looking forward to casting on another sweater. And I'm going to pull up Ravelry here and share with you a few things that are in uh, my favorites list or that I have purchased recently with the intention of knitting. And the first one that I, it's been out for a while and it just recently kind of came across my radar again is the Soiree sweater by... This app does not make it easy to find who the pattern designer is. I, I don't know why they would have designed it that way. It's kind of ridiculous if you ask me. So I do apologize. I'll put it on the screen. I'll have to look it up afterwards. But um, it, it, it wasn't an issue of Pom Pom Magazine. So that means I either have to purchase the designer's book that contains a a group of patterns and I believe it's Knits About Winter um, and I should know who the designer is because I was just looking at this book online. Um, hopefully you're able to see that a little bit. I can post uh, or add in a better photo here so you're not just staring at my iPad but it's got this beautiful cable up the side with this honeycomb detail and it's a very boxy big kind of not fitted sweater, which I really like. It would be really cute to toss on over some jeans or maybe over a dress or just kind of lounge around in, but I really love the way that it fits. I think it would be flattering on my body type, or at least I hope so. Um, yes, so that is the Soiree sweater. It wasn't an issue of pom-pom, so I either need to find that issue of pom-pom to purchase or purchase the designer's Book, which is called Knits About Winter. I have a feeling I will have an easier time finding that book than I will finding that very specific issue of Pom Pom Magazine because I want to say it was a limited edition or a special special edition. So I will likely end up buying uh, the Knits About Winter and I did look through it and there are quite a few patterns in that book that um, I wouldn't mind knitting. Another one that I really want to knit but is not out is, I'm sure you've all have seen it by now, it is the, is it Suceris? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, this is also in an issue of Pom Pom, but that issue has not been released yet. I did sign up for a Pom Pom 
quarterly subscription. So I will be getting the next four magazines. Um, I did get a notification that this issue has released, the one that has this pattern in it. This is from uh, Hoagie Locatelli, and it's going to be in issue 32, which you can purchase, I believe, right now or subscribe to get. But so while I don't, this won't work for the yarn I have in mind, this is on my short list to knit. It is beautiful. And I think you hold some mohair in there. It's just, it's going to be awesome. And I can't wait. I can't wait to get that issue. I think the photography, the model, I think everything about it is beautiful. It struck me in my heart um, as soon as I saw it. So I knew I wanted to knit it right away. I picked up a couple sweater quantities in VKL that I had picked out specific sweaters um, that I was kind of searching for. So those might end up being a contender for what gets cast on next. One of them was the Sorrel, which I'm kind of, I love the idea of the Sorrel sweater, but I'm also kind of wondering if it's something I would enjoy knitting. Of course, you guys should all be familiar with the Sorrel by now. Um, I think if someone were to knit it for me, I think I would adore it. I think there's something about the yoke that it intrigues me, but I also am a little bit worried. I hesitate just a smidge, wondering if it'll just... I have heard it's kind of a slog. Um, however, the finished result is fabulous. So you just kind of have to push through. And I'm kind of terrible at pushing through slogs. Um, so I'm a little bit worried that if I were to cast on, it would end up in a whip pile somewhere and I wouldn't be... I feel like it would be in timeout a lot um, or be kind of set on the back burner. So I'm not entirely certain I'm ready to dive into that yet, but it definitely is on my list of things. And then the other one is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli, and this is the After the Rain. And actually I saw Christy had knit uh, one of these that she brought to VKL in a very hot pink color. Um, and it was gorgeous, and so that's why it hit my radar, and I really wanted to knit it. It has this beautiful split hem, and then the little pattern detailing on right above the cuffs, on the arms. I just, I like it. I like the idea of having that pattern, that lace portion down the front uh, to kind of keep you, keep you entertained, uh, so it's not just... I, I do really well with yokes, like color work yokes, but then once it turns into just stockinette for the body, it's just kind of like, eh, like I'm over it. So I'm hoping that having a pattern, that a pattern panel that runs all the way down the front will keep me engaged and interested. So uh, another one that I've been meaning to knit for quite a while is the um, No Frills sweater. And I also am very intrigued, even more intrigued, uh, to knit a similar one by Jessie Mae um, that is, I can't believe I didn't save it to my favorites. Yes, here it is. The uh, Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Mae Martinson, um, which is fairly similar to the, um, the No Frills in which it's fingering weight held with a mohair um, silk, or actually now that I'm looking at this, it says it's DK, but maybe it's DK because you're holding a skein of fingering with the mohair. Yes, mohair and fingering are held together throughout. You can also substitute fingering held double or DK weight yarn held single. So that's what I really like about this pattern. Jessie Mae has put in so much work to make it very size inclusive. She's included a ton of modifications to make it work for your body. So it has, you can either do waist shaping or no waist shaping. There's ways to do decreases on the arms. It's just a very thorough pattern. Um, and even reading through the description here on Ravelry, it's just so much information. And I really, really like that. I like being able to modify things so they fit my body. Um, 
because not everyone, as beautiful as this model is, um, not everyone is her size, um, including myself. So I know she's got, um, and, and I love that her testers are all different sizes. So as you're scrolling through, you can see it on a lot of different bodies and you can see how they've modified it. So there's, it's very fitted. Um, where here it's very loose and comfy looking. So I really like that those options are available to you. Um, I just, I really like how thorough she's been um, in making this pattern work for multiple bodies. So that is probably most likely what I'll be casting on um, with brine. I think it would make a beautiful just stockinette, um, but I would have to think about what I would, what kind of mohair I'd hold with it. Um, if I hold mohair at all, uh, if I didn't, I'd have to hold it double. I don't know. I don't want to use just a bare mohair um, or a white mohair because I don't want it to brighten this up. I like the moodiness of it, so I may have to look at uh, dyeing up some maybe dark gray mohair or dark blue mohair. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I know that I want to cast something on soon, but I want it to, I want it to be a cast on that has a lot of passion and spark and excitement behind it instead of just like a, yeah, whatever. Um, so I'm sure that that will happen very soon. Um, I've just been, like I said, in the mindset of finishing things. So we shall see what happens. Another thing that I wanted to share with you guys is semi shop update related, um, semi cast on related. Um, and that is, I told you guys last week that I would share the uh, first round of the Witcher Club with you guys. And um, I wanted to wait just a little bit to make sure everyone got their packages. I'm hoping that everyone that was out of the States should be, should have received theirs already or be getting it shortly. So I do apologize if you know you're getting yours and you do not live in the U.S., Please look away because I, I don't want to spoil things for you, and but I also can't see when your package has been delivered. I just know it's it's crossed the borders. <laughs> it's on its way. So I hope that it's soon, or I hope it's already there. But everyone in the U.S. has already received theirs. Um, so here we are. I also want to cast on something with my Witcher Club. It is a three-skein club. Um... I will likely be extending it after April, so I will continue to add to that, but I wanted to include something that would be fabulous for a three skein project. And so I teamed up with uh, Carrie Cohen Brown. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that, but um, I'll put in a better photo. But this is what I included with the first installment. So please enjoy a complimentary pattern. Thank you for joining in on the Witcher Club. Use the code below to grab this pattern. And again, I will include a much lovelier photo in color. Um, but she recently, this pattern was originally a four skein pattern, but she just recently updated it. So it is using three skeins of yarn and she actually she used some Lofty Loops stuff she had in her stash which I didn't even know she was doing. I She kind of reached out or we reached out to each other to talk about um, buying a pattern or you know getting a pattern from a designer for the club and she's like well kind of perfect timing because I'm just finishing up updating this pattern for um, for a three skein project and I'm using your yarn. So I'm like, oh, well that's very serendipitous. So um, the pictures that I will include are the new updated three skein pattern. Um, but know that if you're looking on Ravelry, um, there is also a four skein version. So it is knit with fingering weight, which is perfect for the club. Um, and I'm covering up obviously the, the code down here at the bottom, but um, 
The way it's constructed would also work wonderfully with the club because it's very color blocked. So you can start with that first skein and you can cast on right away and knit throughout the month until you receive your second skein and then you can add it in. So I really liked that aspect too. I didn't want to gift a pattern that you would need all three colors right away because then people would be waiting until April to cast anything on. So those that have chosen to cast on this shawl, I really, really hope that you enjoy it. Um, I would love to see your progress. I will likely open up a, uh, I'm going to open up a thread in the Ravelry group where you guys can chat away about what you what your thoughts are. If you've cast this on, maybe you cast on something else, what you're planning. I'd love to know. Please share that with me. Um, and I'm also going to be casting on my own three skein project with the clubs too. So now I'm going to share the yarn. So again, look away if you don't want to see. Um, I did already post a photo on Instagram, so it is there. Um, but for month one, I'm so excited, you guys, about this theme. I'm so, so excited. I'm so excited to go outside my comfort zone and get more moody and dark and just... I'm, I'm a very watercolor, pastel, light, bright, pretty colors. And so I really wanted to take this opportunity to get a bit darker, moodier, grungier, dirtier. Um, and I am enjoying it so much so far. The first installment is called The Lioness of Sintra. And it is this beautiful bronzy shade with deep speckles of some kind of raspberry purples and greens and blues and grays kind of similar to the speckles and colors that I used on brine just with a different base so this one ended up being very bronzy almost like a what's that kind of, what's the word where like you know when a penny gets kind of oxidized and where it starts turning that greenish shade so it's kind of older grungier dirtier not quite so bright and shiny um but yeah I was I was very inspired by um the queen and her armor that she wears and her beautiful crown and um some of the dresses she wears and the whole, I mean, the whole environment, the whole um, feel of everything in The Witcher is dark, grungy, dirty, uh, moody, but for some reason the colors in Sintra and in the palace and it just, they had this they took on this almost metallic feel under all of that grunge. And so that's kind of what I tried to draw on. So I am so happy with how this came out. I did write down recipes for everything so far, which means I can recreate them. However, because it is a club, it will be exclusive to the club at least for six months, if not longer. So I will not be dyeing these again or introducing them into the shop. Um, so I'm sorry if you missed out, but there is a little glimmer of hope that it can be recreated and it will likely make its way into the shop at some point in the future. So this needs to get caked up and cast on. Again, I'm just trying to decide what pattern I wanna make. Um, I can't decide if I wanna go with the one that I included in the club, or if there's something else, I have so many three skein shawls in my queue, and I really kind of want to dig through and see what's been sitting there for quite a while um, and see, see where we go. But I am so in love with this color. I love how it turned out. I am just so thrilled, and I really am having fun figuring out this side of me artistic wise, because like I said, the grunge, the dark, the moody is something that's new for me. But as you can see, 
with brine, clearly I, I am enjoying going that direction and wanting to explore that a bit more. I don't know when this will get cast on, but it is on my short list of things to do. I'm going to use some of my own hand spun yarn. This is from this past Advent season. This is my favorite skein so far to come out of the Advent season um, that I spun over December. Um, I want to knit a shift hat by Andrea Mowry um, using this. I believe her pattern calls for spin cycle yarns, but any hand spun is going to work similarly. I just need to find some Aran weight, I think, is what the pattern calls for. So I need to find some DK or Aran weight, um, like a dark solid to go with this. So this will be the contrast that pops in the shift. Um, and I don't have, I don't have anything that's spun up. This is, it did come out to be a heavy fingering, whereas this one is closer to a DK or Aaron. Um, I like the pink one more, but this one might end up working out better for that pattern. Um, so it just kind of depends on what I find to be that contrast, and then I'll kind of, maybe I'll, maybe I'll swatch what. Um, but yeah, I'll figure out which one of these I want to use. But again, on my very short list of things to get on the needles. That makes it sound like I have a lot of things I want to cast on. That shouldn't be surprising to anyone. Um, I also really have a lot of ideas, like I said, for the things that I purchased at VKL. I have things sitting in a basket over here that are already put together for projects. So I'm happy with the progress that I've made on whips and finishing things. And I feel like I've accomplished a lot recently. I finished my plumpy, I finished my party top, I finished this baby sweater, I finished some socks. So I feel like I'm finishing a lot recently, um, which is very unlike me. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see where that goes. Um, life stuff, I am very, very, very excited to announce that a couple days ago I purchased a new vehicle. Um, I bought a 2017 Ford Explorer and I am so excited. Um, my truck I've had for six or seven years now was a 2004. That was the newest car I ever owned. It has served me well. It's a Buick uh, Rainier and I, I adore that truck. It My kids grew up in that truck. It's got us lots of places, lots of traveling. Um, but... My son, my son turns 16 in just a few short weeks, so he will be inheriting uh, the Buick Rainier, and that will be his car to drive around um, once he gets a job, and once he helps pay for insurance on it, and once he's able to put gas in the gas tank. So. There are a few stipulations he's got that he needs to meet um, before we just hand over keys to him. Um, well, first he has to pass his driving test. We'll see. Um, <laughs> but it it is time that I upgraded and instead of running out to buy him something that may not last for quite a while, I know that that Rainier still has quite a bit of life left in it. <clears throat> it served me so well over the past handful of years, and it'll serve him well too. So, um, I did I did upgrade. So now I have a Ford Explorer, like I mentioned, and because it is so new, it's got all the bells and whistles that I've never had before. So it's got the backup camera, it's got the lights that come on to warn me if someone's in my blind spot or if I'm about to run into someone. Um, Oh my gosh, it has a heated steering wheel, which just gives me life right now. Um, it's it's a beautiful car, and I am so thrilled with it. However, I do feel a little bit like it's too fancy for me. <laughs> I'm not used to this feeling. Um, it's very bougie, I'll say that. And 
I love it. So that's really exciting. It does have, I did look, it does have more cargo area in the back with seats folded down so I can haul more things in it than I could in my Rainier. That was one thing I had to check on because when I do shows, I have to pack up all the grid wall and all the yarn and all the stuff and Stella, my mannequin, um, everything has to fit because I don't have a trailer to haul. So everything should fit. Um, a little bit better than it did in my last truck, which is good. And it does have a third row seat option, which will be fantastic when we take family trips because now my kids won't be, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you in the back seat bench area. Um, I can split them up. One of them can have a full all the way in the back. One of them can have a full bench in the middle and they are getting rather large, so the more space that they can have to themselves, the better. Um, my son is about probably six one, six. He's he's about six foot, six foot one at this point, almost sixteen. And my daughter, <clears throat> my daughter is five nine, and she's twelve. So I have a very tall family. My husband is six five. So whatever I got, I had to make sure these tall, tall people all fit in the car all at once. <laughs> um, I am now the shortest person in my family at 5'7". So we have, we have a very large family. Um, so yeah, I almost need like a cargo van. That's what I was a little bit worried I'd have to get. But with my son moving out um, into driving his own car and his own vehicle, we really probably won't be all in the car all at once unless we're going on a trip or we're going out to dinner or something like that. So it should be should be okay, um, but there's plenty of room in that thing and it's beautiful. <clears throat> Another thing that I picked up recently or it showed up recently is not knitting, well semi-knitting related, but it isn't stash acquisition. It's not yarn, um, but I did want to share it because it's sort of related. Um, I picked up a new purse from Vera Bradley and they were having, they were running a special where everything was 25% off. So I did get a fairly decent discount on this. Um, it is a sling backpack model. So here it's got the one over the shoulder, over the head shoulder. Um, it has a little pocket here. A little pocket here this opens up and then a small pocket on the back um, it is quilted I love the print it's so pretty I've got my Shelly can I feel like knit hanging off it already and my d12 or d20 dice pin on there um, but I was finding myself I love my old purse from Jumping Pineapple. Um, I will likely still continue to use that um, on special occasions, but really the only thing I had in it were keys, some aspirin, and some chapstick, and my little tiny wallet that holds my cards and ID. And so I was hauling around this purse with all of this room inside, but it was not big enough for a project, a sock project or anything like that. So I'm just kind of like, I'm going to go ahead and purchase something that can hold literally all of my purse stuff is in this one thing here. That's all the bigger my purse stuff takes up. It's just all, like I could get away with just a clutch really. Um, but if you open this pocket up and right now there's no project in it because I just finished those socks, but you've got all this space inside to shove a project bag. And so now, well here, I can just show you. So I have all my purse things. And now I also have my knitting. And I am so excited about this idea um, because now I can take a sock project on the go or a smaller project anywhere with me and no one's any the wiser. I've also, I was reading reviews and there are lots of new moms that have said that this is the perfect 
purse slash diaper bag because this is so this pocket on the inside is so large that you can fit diapers and wipes and bottles and things like that but it's still super cute and then all of this is just your essential keys you know my phone will fit in this pocket um yeah so I wanted to share this because it is too cute and I'm very happy that I can now carry around a sock project with me um, without it being obvious I'm carrying around a sock project with me. <laughs> I do feel a little awkward when I go to work and I plop my my project bag down on my desk so now it'll be stashed away in my purse and no one will no one will know so um, I think that's about all I've got for you guys I've just been uh, my husband and I started watching Homeland which uh, has been out for a very long time. It's a Showtime show, uh, but it's on Hulu right now for free. So we started that. It's fairly good. Um, I've also been watching Castle Rock. I'm in season two of that. It's kind of, it's based on um, the Stephen King universe. So it's got that super creep factor that I'm really into. And books, I am into the third, three of three, books of the Carnival series by Stephanie Gruber. So I am reading Legendary right now. Nope, I'm reading Finale right now. Um, so it's Carnival, Legendary, and then Finale. And I'm in the third book. I'm enjoying it. Um, I wasn't super into the first book. I thought it was written kind of weird and fluffy and I don't know, but it's a really nice light book to read. It's light reading with enough of like drama and stuff going on to keep me really intrigued. It's got some twists and turns and so it's been it's been a fun ride so far. So um, really enjoying that one and um, because I've been watching Castle Rock I am really wanting to start reading some Stephen King books. I've read a couple in the past when I was younger but I think I was probably too young to really understand what was going on. Also they're really creepy so there were some that I started and never finished. So now as an adult um, I would like to read some of his more famous books, um, like Mercy and, um, The Green Mile, and I've read Pet Cemetery multiple times. That is one that I've read multiple times, but, um, yeah, I want to read It. I also want to see It, Chapter 2, which I haven't done yet. Um, funny story about It, Chapter 2 definitely going to say this out loud, but uh, the other night my daughter had a friend over and my daughter is one of those kids that just marches to the beat of her own drum. She is kind of a weirdo and we love her for it. Like she has her own spirit. She's just an oddball. She's a character for sure. Um, and we, we just, we adore her. Um, so she was doing this weird thing where she was kind of like, walking around the living room just being odd <laughs> being slightly in you know whatever and I was like oh my gosh you're creeping me out quit walking like that and her friends laughing and I was like you kind of remind me of that old grandma from the it chapter two trailer um, because we have seen the previews for it she's seen it with her friend a couple times and um, I have yet to see it but it's like, you kind of look like that creepy grandma that runs around and anyway, she goes, oh, oh, you mean floppy titty grandma? And I said, what did you just say? So I looked at my husband and I think my jaw was on the ground. His jaw was on the ground and we were like, what did you just say? Did you just say floppy titty grandma? <laughs> it's not, I couldn't. I had no words. I, it's not technically a bad word in my opinion. We're pretty lax with our kids. Obviously they're not dropping F-bombs or S-bombs or anything like that, but um, they know that like adult language is adult language and it shouldn't be used as children, especially around elders and there's a respect thing there. But so I'm like, it's not necessarily a, a bad word. But I've also never heard that word come out of my daughter's mouth. <laughs> so we 
I didn't know how to respond to it. And she's like, what? That's, that's what, that's what we call her. So apparently that's what the kids are calling her. <laughs> like crying. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know how we spiraled into this conversation. Oh, I was talking about Stephen King and it, but so yes, so that happened. So that was the fun shock of the week. Um, gosh, kids, the stuff that comes out of their mouth. I just, I can't, never a dull moment. So if you've watched that movie and you know of the grandma that I'm referring to, um, please now refer to her as floppy titty grandma if you would like, because apparently that's what all the cool kids are calling her. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, your week ahead and your weekend now. I hope you have great weather. I hope you have lots of knitting time and I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, yes, appreciate it. I'll talk with you guys soon. Happy knitting. Bye!